appreciate being here. It's a, it's a wonderful opportunity I, that, that I'm humbled by. I, I appreciate Dale for the wonderful introduction. There's a few things that uh, I did not know. I did not know that uh, I had been here uh, so much, and, and I, I appreciate the, the invitation and, and the, the continued invitations uh, to be here. Also, I, I didn't know that I, apparently I was captain of the pole vaulting team in, uh, in high school. I did, I did not know that. I, I, um, that, that was, that's new for me. Uh, I ran track, but um, the pole vault, that, that was scary to me, so I, I stayed away from that. I did know about the hip-hop single. Now, if you go to Spotify or if you go to iTunes, you might be able to find me. I can neither confirm nor deny that. Uh, but uh, maybe, maybe, I don't think this is the, the proper form for me to talk about my hip-hop career, so I'll just, I'll just leave that uh, to you and uh, on your own time. But I I'm happy to be here today. Uh, one of the things that I normally think about when I am privileged to speak to young people is, is I, I do a journey myself, and it's apropos, I think, that this is the, the theme, the, the title uh, that you all will be uh, uh, looking at for this, uh, the next few days. But I go on a journey, and I go on a journey that takes me back to when I was in your shoes. Now that was a, a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, but uh, I, I'm, I'm happy that I, I'm able to talk to you because w when I was in your shoes, um, I, my, my story might be a little bit like some of yours. I was an active member of my youth group growing up. And I was active because partly my dad was the preacher and I kind of had to be. I had to be active and I was, but I was active at so many other things. Anytime the doors to the church building were open, I was there. Whether it be a uh, the Sunday morning service, Sunday school, I was there. Sunday evening service, I was there. Wednesday night, I was there. You have a breakfast on a Saturday morning, men's breakfast, something like that, I was there. I accompanied my dad to many uh, a leadership meeting, I was there. I kind of sat around, I was there. And, but then I looked at how I was once I left the walls, the, the peaceful walls of the church building. And then I got around my friends who did not go to church with me. I would get into the halls of the school and there wasn't much difference between me and them. They didn't go to church, I did. They didn't spend much time praising God, I did. They, they didn't, many of them probably didn't even have Bibles in their home, I had plenty. But there was no difference, really, between me and them other than how I spent my Sundays and my Wednesdays, the occasional youth group trips, and the occasional Saturday business meetings. Not much difference between my lifestyle and theirs. We talked about the same things. We went the same places. We uh, ventured down the same pathway together. Many of us had the same goals, dreams, and aspirations. There, there was much, not much difference between my life and their life, even though I am the Christian of the group. I was the Christian of the group indeed, but I sure didn't act like the Christian of the group. I acted just like them. You wouldn't know by hanging out with me that my dad was a preacher. You wouldn't know by hanging out with me that I spent every Wednesday night in the church building in, in Bible class. You wouldn't know by hanging out with me that I was there on Sundays, uh, Sunday morning, Sunday for a Sunday school. You wouldn't know by talking to me, by looking at me, that I was different than anyone else. So as I journey mentally and think, why wasn't I different? Well, why was I just like everyone else? Why was I the, the chameleon of the group? How could I blend in like that? How is it that all of the church going that I did, how is it that that didn't have any effect on how I live my life in the world? How is that possible? 
that my dad was a gospel preacher. How is it possible that when I left out of his home that I was just like everyone else? Did the lessons not stick? Was I not sincere in my praise? Was I not paying attention in Bible class? Was my, when the songs that I was singing, did they not resonate in my heart? How is it that I could be just like everyone else? Then it hit me. I think the reason I was just like everyone else is that I focused a lot of my attention on what I had to do. I had to do for God. I focused my attention on what I had to do. I had to be there on Sunday, and I had to be there at Sunday school, and I had to be a certain way while I was there. I think I, I focused on, I, I had to be there on Wednesdays, and I had to be at every church function. I had to be at the picnics, and I had to be at the, the dinners. I had to be at the fellowship meals. I focused a lot of my attention on things that I had to do but all the while I was missing what God was doing. I focused my attention on all the things that I had to do for the Lord that I missed all the things that God was busy doing for me. Now, had I had that focus, if I had been thinking about all of the wonderful ways and all of the wonderful things that God had done, all the wonderful things that God was doing in my life at that moment, it might have produced something special in me. But I was focused on me and not on him. I was focused on what I had to do and not on what God had done. See, I believe that if you young people today are not going to wind up in the same boat that I am or I was in, if you're going to come here to something like this, be exposed to all this wonderful teaching and go home and actually do something with it, then you've got to focus on what God has done. Don't focus so much on all the things that you have to do. Focus on what he has done. And when you focus on what he has done, when that is the driving force, when that is the thing that you think about the most, everything else that comes after that, that will be praise and a blessing unto him on what God has done. So right now you're at a critical point in your journey. You're at a time when you can go one way or the other. You're of the age where you're beginning to make many decisions that are going to affect you for the rest of your life. So let me drop this on you. Let me give you this. And hopefully it's a gift unto you. That this gift is, I'm going to leave here and I'm going to focus on what God has done. And as you age and as you mature and as you leave your parents' home and as you go off to college perhaps somewhere, I want you to keep focusing on what God has done. When you get families of your own, I want you to focus on what God has done. And when you have children, when you're raising up children in the fear of the admonition of the Lord, I want you to instill in them an appreciation and a focus on what God has done because when you do that it will change your whole life there was a king by the name of David David wrote a psalm about this and I want to share this psalm with you this is Psalm 103 David is kind of introspective and you can see that David tends to look back over his life as he writes. He looks back over his life and he, he, he writes down things that are affecting him in the moment, things and ways that God has blessed him throughout his existence. And I can see David kind of being introspective. He's contemplating all of what God has done and he writes these words. He says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Now what David is saying, he's using this word bless, and the word bless is the Hebrew word barak, and it means praise. David's looking back and he's saying, praise the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, praise his holy name. David realizes as he looks back what God has done. 
He looks at all that God has done in his life and through his life and for his life. And David, the only thing he can say is, praise the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. David is saying, I want my life to be a walking, talking, living, breathing song of praise unto the Lord. When you focus on what God has done for your life, that's with the end result, that's the byproduct of that. You and I being walking, talking, living, breathing songs of praise for the Lord. He says, all that is within me. You know what I, I it took me a long time to learn. It took me a long time to learn this. The thing that God wants most from me. What God wants most from me was not all of the times that, that I was in, in Bible class and, and, and at Sunday school and at youth group. And those things are good. But what God wanted most from me was my heart. He wanted my heart. Because my heart is everything that makes me me. It's all driven by the heart. That's what he wants the most. And that's why I was a different person. Once I walked out of the doors of the church building, once I walked out of my parents' home, that's, that's why I was the same as everyone else, because I had not given God what he wanted most. I hadn't given him my heart. With you right now, does he have your heart? He has your bodily presence here, and he just had your songs. Hopefully that was a sweet aroma into his nostrils. He had that. He has your attention right now, but does he have what he wants the most, which is your heart. Does he have the lordship over your heart? He might have the lordship over some of your time, but does he have the lordship over your heart? He didn't have the lordship over my heart. He had the lordship over my time, but not over my heart. David says, I'm giving him everything that makes me me. I'm going to praise the Lord. All that is within me. I want to praise his holy name because I want to focus and I'm focusing on what God has done. He says this, verse number two, bless the Lord, praise the Lord on my soul again and forget not all his benefits. See, David starts going back and he realizes that God gives benefits. Everything that God does and everything that God is, he gives from who he is. He gives great benefits and I can praise the Lord and I can praise him at all times as he says in Psalm 34 I can praise him at all times when I think about all that he has done don't forget his benefits if you want to be a transformed young Christian for God for Christ don't forget his benefits if you want to re remain in a state of perpetual joy don't forget his benefits. If you want to walk the straight and narrow in a way that you haven't done before, you need some fuel for that fire. So your fuel is don't forget his benefits. And his benefits are plenty. But you know what the, the greatest way God has benefited you? It's not, it's not your life. It's not the, the idea that we can breathe in and breathe out. It's, it's not the fact that we can eat or we have shelter uh, over our head. Those are great benefits, but that's not the number one benefit. You got to focus on the number one benefit. What is the number one benefit? Well, David knows. David knows. He says in verse number three, who forgives all your iniquities. Our greatest problem as mankind, our greatest problem as a culture, as a world, as a society, our greatest problem is not our economics and our greatest problem is not uh, our friends and uh, people talking about us that's not our greatest problem that might be your most pressing issue but that's not your greatest problem your greatest problem is the sin that's in our lives our greatest problem is sin because of what sin does to us sin separates us from God the prophet Isaiah talks about that it separates us from God 
He cannot get close to us because of the sin that's in our lives. Why? Because he's a holy, he's a righteous, he's a mighty God, but he's not going to deal with the sin. And our greatest problem is the sin because it keeps us away, keeps us out of relationship, keeps you out of fellowship with the God who loves you so much. But because he loves you so much, God said, I'm going to create a way to remove this sin from your life. And he did that through Calvary's cross. He did that when Jesus died on that cross. He did that as Jesus died, as he hung there, as he was put in a rich man's tomb three days later, he got up from the grave firmly declaring that he is the son of God. God did that and he did it for all of you. Don't forget his benefits. Jesus is your greatest benefit because he removed your greatest problem and that all came from the God who loves you so much. If you want to be moved to praise, if you want to be moved to a different type of life, you can't forget your number one benefit. Focus on what God has done for you. But it doesn't just stop there. God gives benefits on top of benefit. That's our, great, that's our greatest benefit. If he, if he did nothing else, he's already done enough. But that's not the God that you serve. God is a God who keeps on giving. He keeps on giving and keeps on giving and keeps on giving. He gives in such a way that, and, and so often, that we often don't even think about how he is blessing our lives. Look at this. David says that he forgives all of our iniquities, but he also says, who heals all your diseases. Every sickness that you have had, that you no longer have, God did that. Every cold you had, and you don't have it anymore, it wasn't because of medicine, it was because of God. Every runny nose, every uh, stuffed up nose that you had, that you don't have right now, how did you get rid of it? That was God. Every sore throat, every headache, every stomach ache that you no longer have, that was the goodness of God over your life. Don't forget the benefits. Pay attention to them, because they are a plenty. We'll be moved to say, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. I'm going to praise his holy name when I don't forget the benefits. So David goes on in this psalm, and he goes back and forth between spiritual benefits and physical benefits. Because God is the God and the Lord over all of those things. He's the Lord over everything spiritually. He's the Lord over everything physically. Whether we acknowledge it or not, he still is God. So from verse number 6 really through 19, really from verse 3 through 19, he goes back and forth, physical, spiritual, spiritual, physical. Goes back and forth saying that God is the God of all and I cannot forget any of his benefits. It's like David is just writing down the things that he thinks of, and he's thinking of so many things. He goes back and forth. He's blessed me this way spiritually, but he's also blessed me this way physically. He's blessed me over here spiritually, but he's blessed me down the road physically because God is a great giver of benefits. But as he closes this psalm, he says that when I think about God as the giver of benefits, He's a giver of benefits, and, and he gives in such a way that it affects everyone. It doesn't just affect me, and it doesn't just affect you. The benefits are not just for David, but the benefits are for everyone, everything, everywhere. So he goes even into the heavenly realms. He looks at the angels. He says in verse number 20, Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his, who do his pleasure. Even the angels in the heavenly realm, they have such a vantage point that they can see directly what God is doing. David is saying, because you can see from your vantage point better than anyone else what God is doing, how he is blessing the world, even the angels should say, praise the Lord, bless the Lord, oh 
my soul. Because when you see it, you need to give God some praise. If he's done something for you, that needs to be turned right back into focus and reverential praise. Even the angels should praise. Everyone, everything, everywhere. Even to the tiniest of insects, to the largest of brute beasts. So he ends his psalm by saying, bless the Lord all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Everyone, everything, everywhere. Everyone, everything, everywhere benefits from the almighty God and they should even turn it into praise. Everyone on every continent, every livable continent on this earth should say bless the Lord oh my soul because they have benefited from God to the people in North America to the people in South America to the people in Europe and Asia to the people of Africa to the people in Australia they have benefited from God Almighty even they should say bless the Lord oh my soul but that's not relegated to people but every living creature every living creature has benefited from God Almighty if you go to Africa and you see the uh, elephant there on the continent of Africa with his large frame and ivory tusks that elephant eats off of the land that God has given the elephant if the elephant could talk the elephant should say bless the Lord oh my soul to the giraffe with its long neck and tall stature who eats on the treetops of the land that God has provided if the giraffe could talk the giraffe should say bless the Lord oh my soul to the lion in the wild who eats off of the animals that God provides. If the lion could talk, the lion should say, bless the Lord, oh my soul. If you go to Asia and see the Bengal tiger, the Bengal tiger eats because God allows the tiger to eat. If the tiger could talk, the tiger should say, bless the Lord, oh my soul. If you go to the Arctic and you see the penguins as they waddle back and forth, as they find food in the dire of conditions if the penguin could talk the penguin should say bless the lord oh my soul if you came into your own house and you had your dog and you feed your dog some kibble and bits when the dog eats if the dog could talk the dog should say bless the lord oh my soul everyone everything everywhere has benefited by the almighty god and everyone Everything, everywhere should say, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. So David says, don't forget his benefits. Don't forget all that God has done. Keep your attention there. Keep your attention on the greatest benefit that he gave you. That's Jesus Christ. And everything else that he gives you after that, that's, that's just gravy. That's just the icing on top of the cake but the greatest thing he gave you was Jesus the greatest thing he gave you was himself and that's what he asks of you yourself I wish someone would have told me this when I was sitting out there like you that my attention should be on all that God has done. Not so much on all that I'm trying to do. Because in this life, the more we try, and the more we try, and the more we try, we'll eventually find out that, that our expertise, our skill, our know-how is limited, and we're eventually going to fail. But God never fails. God is a great God who has benefited you all. He gave you his benefits by allowing safe travel here today. That didn't have to happen, but he did that. He allowed, uh, he gave you benefits by giving you something to eat and he's going to give you something to eat again. That's the benefits of God. But if, if I were 15 and 16 and 17 years old again and someone told me to focus on the benefits, I think it would have made a difference for my life. But thank God... A message like this is coming to you right now. 
But your question is, what are you going to do with that? You heard it, but what are you going to do with it? You know he wants your heart and your life. He's giving you benefits to lead you to him. What are you going to do with that? Is your life going to be any different? Are you going to be the chameleon like I was? Or are you going to take a lesson like this and make some changes to your life? Because he loves you so much. And every benefit he gives you, that's him calling out to you. Every time he blesses you, that's him extending his hand to you. Every meal that you eat, every breath that you take, every step you make, that's him extending his hand to you. What are you going to do with that when you know he wants your life? If you're under this roof tonight, and which we all are, we have an opportunity to come. We, we preach so that people change. We preach so that people come to know Jesus. We preach so that they come to know his mercy and his grace and his love and that they can be covered by his blood. I think that I would speak for anyone who put on a program of this magnitude that the ultimate goal is that people give their lives over to Jesus Christ. And that people who have already done so, who have uh, fallen, that they recommit themselves to Jesus Christ, to giving him lordship over their lives. Because sometimes we give him lordship, but then we take the lordship back. But when he gives you his benefits, he's saying, remember where your blessings come. So to you out there, who have yet to give your lives over to Jesus Christ. We want tonight to be that night. We, I, I, I'm, I, I'm sure I'm not speaking out of turn. We have a way to baptize you into Jesus Christ. We will take your grand confession and we will baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Your sins will be washed away and you will be added to the body of Christ. That is our invitation to you, to come to Jesus, to come and be saved, to come and rededicate yourself, to come and turn from the air of your ways, to come and focus on what God has done. We want you to come, and we want you to come right now as we together stand and sing our song of encouragement. May God bless you.